everyone, welcome to my YouTube channel. Today's video is part of a new series that I've started that is just about my personal reflections, observations, and knowledge that I have gained through the years uh, from a lifetime of being exposed to narcissistic abuse. So we cover a lot of different topics in these videos, and I think my viewers will really, really like this new series. And as always, if anyone is interested in private one-on-one -on -one narcissistic abuse recovery coaching sessions with me, please visit my website. It's linked in the description below. Stay away from people who always consider you expressing how you feel as you arguing or causing problems. That's a huge red flag of narcissism and is a form of gaslighting plain and simple. Remember, the goal of any toxic person is to escape accountability so they don't have to endure a consequence they won't enjoy or be forced to change a behavior they know is wrong. And one of the easiest ways they do that is to shift blame onto you suggesting you are being extra or difficult or too sensitive or a Debbie Downer for bringing up their toxic behavior that they do not want to be held accountable for or change. By doing that, not only do they escape any accountability, but if successful, they now make you believe your normal human reaction and desire to express your feelings is the problem. Over time, that can cause you to suppress more and more of your normal feelings, causing extreme self-doubt and accepting abusive and cruel behavior as normal. My best advice, just stay away from people like that. That's a huge blaring red flag. One of the main reasons that healing from narcissistic abuse is so painful and it hurts so much is because you are mourning a fantasy. In the beginning of the relationship, they were fully engaged. They wanted to know everything about you, your hopes and dreams, your innermost desires, fears, and secrets. They seem to be everything you could ever want in a partner, and we fall head over heels in love. However, things quickly change, and now the person who used to treat you with this unending love and respect has shifted to cruelty, neglect, and abuse. We desperately try to find the person they once were, perhaps seeing that person briefly from time to time, but that part of them starts eluding us more and more as time goes on. What you have to come to terms with is that they were just studying you, exploiting your innermost self to find your weaknesses. The truth is now, what appeared to be your dream come true is now a living nightmare. Everything you shared with them has become weaponized against you. Where you were once loved and adored, you are now treated with hatred and contempt. The higher they had you on the pedestal, the deeper down they make you fall. And to you, the person you fell in love with was real. And in your mind, you believe that you can get that person to come back. But that's just not the reality of what happened. They are not a good person who is having some bad moments. They are a bad person who manipulated and deceived you with a fake and phony portrayal of someone who doesn't really exist. And coming to terms with these facts is a slow and painful process, but it is indeed the truth of what happened. Narcissistic personality disorder is technically defined as a cluster B personality disorder and is viewed as a mental illness. However, in my opinion, it goes beyond that. It is a severe character disorder. It is a moral disorder and it's a spiritual disorder. Narcissists know right from wrong. That's a very important fact for everyone to understand and they make a conscious decision to do the things that they do. So for example, when people with narcissistic personality disorder cynically use others to feed their false self, they know it. When they overreact to perceived criticisms, they know what the truth is. When they lie to conceal their inadequacies, they have chosen to deceive. 
when they scapegoat another human being, it's a deliberate act. And when they refuse to apologize, they know they were in the wrong, which all means that these people are fully engaged in their free will and they are making a conscious choice to do the things that they do. So this isn't a mental illness that causes them to believe things that aren't real or something they can't control. Again, they know right from wrong and they make a conscious and deliberate decision to do wrong, to abuse other people and to pathologically lie. It's a conscious, deliberate decision. Narcissists are willing to completely give up on and abandon relationships with anyone if it requires them to admit to wrongdoing or abusive behavior and apologize. And I do mean anyone. This includes close family members and even their own children. Nothing is more important to a narcissist than complete control over the narrative, their rewritten version of history. That narrative is everything to them. And no matter what they have done, no matter how appalling, how disturbing, or how shocking, they will not accept accountability. And if you refuse to go along with their rewritten version of reality, you will be discarded. I don't care if you're their parent, I don't care if you're their spouse, and I don't care if you're their own child. They will discard you if you require them to admit guilt, take accountability, and apologize. That is not ever gonna happen. I don't care who you are. Let's talk about the phrase victim mentality and what it really is. People wanna use that phrase to describe real victims of real abuse who are expressing the realities of what they have lived through. So you'll hear people talk about so-and-so and how she or he can't get over their abusive relationship. They, they just can't seem to let it go. That is not a victim mentality. That is a victim stating a fact and trying to process their trauma, hopefully resulting in some form of validation. However, the phrase is accurate when explaining how abusers behave when called out for their abusive behavior. Because abusers feel outrage at anyone who has the audacity to call them out. How dare they expose the truth of what they are guilty of and try and hold them accountable. That is indeed an accurate explanation of someone who truly has a victim mentality.